This is HuffPost Live, and I am joined by Kara Santa Maria, the science correspondent of the Huffington Post, and my esteemed colleague Janet Varna here on the set. And this is so exciting right now. Uh, we are joined live from Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena by Bobak Ferdowsi. He is the MSL flight director of the Mars, what is it, Scientific Laboratory? Science Laboratory. A uh, science <laughs> laboratory. Uh, uh, what's up, man? How are you? I'm good. How about you guys? Good. Thank you so much for doing this, because I know when we emailed, you said your life is so crazy right now because you're essentially living on Mars time. Can you tell us a little bit about what it's like to be living on Mars time? Uh, it's a little bit crazy, actually. We are, a lot of us are going to be living on Mars time for the next couple of weeks. What time uh, is it on Mars now? It is, I would say, it's probably early morning on Mars right now. Uh, probably like 4 or 5 in the morning. That's wild, man. So your life is insane now because obviously you have become an internet sensation. Um, I want to talk about the mission and what's going on on Mars in a minute, um, but just tell me about how things are for you since um, this whole wave of internet celebrity has hit you. Your mohawk, people saw you. I mean, it's pretty crazy, man. It's it's definitely surreal. I have uh, I thought it was going to be enough, you know, with the landing. I thought it was just going to be a big emotional moment, kind of living through that the whole week. Uh, just because even you know before the landing we weren't sure what was going to happen. We're always yeah, you know back of the the head concerns like what if it doesn't land. So I just figured that I would spend this week kind of savoring the moment. Uh, but uh, definitely woke up on Monday morning to a kind of different world and uh, big people posting pictures on uh, my Facebook wall and uh, things like that. So it's kind of crazy. Yeah, well, I think I speak for everybody to say we are proud of you and we're proud of, of NASA and JPL for what's going on. It really is an honor, so you know, exciting. for our country yeah. to see what's going on, um, you know, just a little bit away from here in Pasadena, but for the whole country. I want to go through some tweets. I don't know if you've seen any of this on the Huffington Post. Uh, this is on <laughs> HuffPost Science, but uh, there are so many amazing tweets. I want to read a couple of them to you and see if you've heard them and get your reactions. Uh, this is Bull Honk Inator. As a straight guy, let me just say that NASA Mohawk guy is hella dreamy. Like, damn, dude, you are just fun to look at. A little bromance going on there. That's awesome. Oh, uh, fantastic. NASA Mohawk dude is tweets out loud, and he's the coolest guy in the galaxy. Uh, slept soundly and dreamt of Mars robots and tweets out loud. Mohawk woke up still riding that high. Uh, when can we refund NASA? So people are excited, man. You've got people excited. And, and I think that's what we're so excited about, yeah. too, is that you've sort of become the personification of um, everybody's passion for the space program. And that's so that's so cool. So cool. Um, I don't know. Can you see? Uh, I want to show pull something up on my screen, and, and I want you to take a look at it. Let me know uh, if you see it or not. Um, this is one of the photos. This is coming off of the uh, HuffPost Science vertical. And it's a photo, one of the first photos that's come in. and. You guys are calling it a serendipitous moment. There's like a little bit of a cloud on the horizon. Can you yeah. tell me what's going on there? Well, we're not exactly sure, and there's still a lot of investigation to go. There's some theories, uh, you know, kind of floating around that there's that we may have captured the moment that the, the uh, descent stage crashed. As you know, the sky crane lowers us to the ground, and then we cut the umbilicals, and we fly off a safe distance away from the rover. Some people think that we may have actually caught uh, a dust cloud from that impacting somewhere uh, in the distance. That's pretty cool. So l let me back up a little bit. Why don't you tell people what you do? I mean, what is it to be the MSL flight director? What's your job like? Well, there's actually uh, three or four of us who rotate through that position. Uh, since we're operating on Mars time, they try to give us some time off uh, as well, but the rover doesn't ever stop working. Uh, so for me as a flight director, most of my job involves looking at the day's activities uh, or, or making sure they're orchestrated in a way that it's completely safe for the rover, evaluating telemetry that comes down to make sure that the plan that we have going forward is, is safe. And then uh, walking through the execution with the team, making sure each of the subsystems, uh, you know, uh, it approves. So we have the, you know, the kind of the famous polls, you know, the go-no-goes. And then uh, eventually we finish those and check out the, how the day went on Mars. Hey, so Kara, you know, so Kara's here. Kara's our science correspondent, and she hosts the Talk Nerdy to Me series, the incredibly popular series on Huffington Post. <laughs> so nerd to nerd, I want to let her ask you a question. <laughs> So I want to know, because a lot of people have been asking me how much, I mean, we know that all of EDL was basically autonomous. It was pre-programmed into Curiosity. How much now that it's on the surface of Mars is, um, you know, autonomous, and how much are you kind of remote controlling this guy? We, we can't really remote control a whole lot. I'm sure uh, you're familiar with the fact that it takes about 14 minutes for light to travel between us and Mars. So each command would take 28 minutes. During the very beginning of the mission, like the first couple sols, we did a lot of two-way commanding, basically just sending a command, waiting the 30 minutes, basically, to find out if it went well. Uh, once we get into the swing of things, we have to do things through the orbiting assets and 
through the morning command. So basically, we'll command in the morning. Those sequences will run throughout the day. And then at the end of the day, we'll check on the orbiters, and they'll, they'll send us data back to tell us how the rover went. Uh, there is a bunch of autonomy, of course, built in and, and functional on the software to make sure that if something doesn't happen on the spacecraft, that the, the, the rover saves itself and, and doesn't do anything that would further harm itself. Sure. Uh, hey, Bob, I got another photo here that's up on HuffPost Science that I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about. Um, Mars Curiosity rover's first high-resolution picture shows heat shield, Martian surface. This actually looks like a picture, what, of a satellite taking a picture of the rover going down to Mars, or what yeah, is Yeah, is that what that little speck is? Uh, no, what you're actually seeing there is this, we have a camera that's uh, mounted to the, basically, uh, on the stomach of the rover. Uh, it's called the MARTI, it's a Mars Descent Im Imager. Uh, what that it, it was doing th throughout the landing, it was taking uh, basically HD video, about eight frames per second, uh, of the the whole landing event, so there's a, there's a movie of this as well in thumbnails. We're we're getting these the version that you have here is a higher res resolution version. We're getting those higher resolution versions down now. But that little speck you see is actually the front of the heat shield. That's the the part of the the aeroshell or the you know the flying saucer looking thing uh, as we enter the atmosphere. That's the part that took the brunt of the heating. And you're seeing this is the very back of it. It's reflective because there's some uh, wires running through there. We have an instrument that was mounted there that helped us understand the atmosphere of Mars as we were entering it a little better. It's hmm. actually one of the photos that we've been kind of showing around work. It's really exciting for a lot of us. We didn't really think we would be able to see, you know, that side of that that part of the spacecraft ever again. So it's yeah. really cool. So eventually are we gonna have like a high res bird's eye view of the rover itself landing? You are going to see it as if you were landing yourself uh, on Mars, and that's oh. the uh, HD version of that. Have you seen <laughs> that's it? That's so have cool. You, have you, have you, there's a lot that hasn't been released yet. You guys have been pretty quiet for the last yeah. couple of days. Have you seen it already? Uh, we don't have all those frames down yet, so we haven't seen it. We've seen some of the images, uh, like, like the one you showed. There's one where the heat shield is a little closer to us. Uh, so n no full, full full footage video yet, but we're all still enjoying actually the thumbnail quite a bit. Is there anything that you can tell us that hasn't been released or what you guys have been doing yet? Um, let's break it right here. I, I mean, let's life. do it. We've got the Huffington Post community watching right now. What is going on there that we don't know about yet? You know, we're actually we're 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 being uh, we're telling you guys things as we find them. We're definitely not uh, the scientists are going to always evaluate all the data before we we make any conclusions about it. But we're actually showing you guys things. Uh, within hours of the time they're coming down from the spacecraft. So uh, you guys have about as good a view as, as I do. Uh, I got a couple questions on from my Facebook. I asked people to uh, comment, and I put this sweet photo of you in your hair. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I got a bunch of uh, responses. Um, one of them was from Maddie uh, Kaimian, excuse me if I'm pronouncing her name wrong. She's wondering about your parents um, and what your background is. Were they both um, Iranian? Uh, when did they come to the U.S. or, or were they United States, are they United States citizens? Uh, well, they're, they're both uh, citizens. Uh, my dad came from Iran. My mom is was uh, uh, raised in Mississippi, so uh, you know I'm, a, I'm I guess I'm a mix. Um, but uh, they met in college, and uh, I guess I'm the product of that. And there's a lot of people <laughs> say, saying they have a lot of pride, a lot of um, Persian pride uh, for you. Do you are you getting those messages too? I am. I, I think it's awesome. I, you know, I it's always fun to to help a community feel inspired, but. Uh, in general, you know, uh, I'm just a, a kid who works at the uh, Jeff Walsh Library. <laughs> Can I ask you a question, Bobak? I want to know, you know, I was talking to a friend of mine about how there's been, you know, such kind of a stir around you and around your hair. And, you know, some people say, oh, my gosh, they barely look old enough to be working in mission control or whatever. And, and it's something that I deal with all the time as a science correspondent who has a science background, who's, you know, pierced and has tattoos. And I remember saying, you know, you know, actually one of the tweets I think was something like, this isn't your grandfather's NASA. Right, right, or this right, isn't right. your father's NASA, which yeah. is so funny to me because I always try to tell people, if you go to any lab in the country and you kind of survey all the grad students, they look more like you and me yeah. than they than, you know, like grandpa. But I'm wondering, I did try and tell a friend of mine, I kind of feel like JPL is like the badass like NASA. <laughs> Do you feel like that a little bit? It's where there a rivalry go. with other with other NASA I, places. I think <laughs> we're definitely, you know, we feel like we're, we're kind of that badass of, uh, of NASA. Uh, I think That's it's awesome. just a fun mentality. And, and we, the kind of missions, you know, uh, the sort of excitement and uh, challenges of the missions, you got to have that sort of a little bit of swag. Sure. Well, swag. I mean, JPL, you're, you're, you're going to other worlds at JPL. You know, that's like a big part of what you guys do is explore other places, go yeah. to other planets. And I mean, come on, that's pretty badass. It's it's a lot of fun. We love it. 
Uh, hey, Bobek, so I got a, also I got a tweet that I have here just on my Twitter, and it's somebody who said, they were talking about a tweet you put out this morning. It says, please ask him about the high five practice he referenced in today's tweet. <laughs> I would like a demo and details of said practice, <laughs> Let's please. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see the high five. You know, it actually requires three people. There's two of us <laughs> who, who have the high five and another guy who's guiding our hands the whole time <laughs> can we do it virtually on the screen right now is it possible right, to do try. okay here we go oh, 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 oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. and can i just say We're i know everybody is going on and on about your hair but what about those teeth is that not the most beautiful <laughs> smile you've ever seen? Guys, let's keep it. Uh, keep, let's control let's ourselves keep it scientific. here. Let's, let's this keep it scientific. Has, no, this guy has been getting marriage proposals, which is Wait, like, speaking are of you which, serious? Hold on, hold are you on. Serious? Speaking of which, no, we do have a slideshow here on the Huffington Post. <laughs> we do have many verticals, and while you have appeared on HuffPost Tech and HuffPost Science, you're also on HuffPost Weddings because of all of the marriage proposals <laughs> that you're getting. I mean, come um, on, and guys. I want to go through a couple of them. Uh, I know you're busy, but will you marry me, land something on Mars, if the answer is yes? <laughs> he has a different hairstyle. He, he has a different hairstyle for each event. I'd ask him to marry me, but I think he'd be the, I'd be the 20,000th person to, Aww. or 2,000th person Yeah, per, 20, Amy, you probably two. would be. Also, you've never met him, so. Bobak, <laughs> marry me. And by the way, you have a girlfriend, right? I do. She's, she's awesome. She's totally put up with the whole whole long hours I, and everything. I've got, her, I've got, our, you know, on our behalf, we are very sorry. Just I want to say this I've for got, all of the tweets you've been Strangely, there's another one right here from... What? Wait a minute. What? Janet Varney, my uh, co-host, who's sitting oh, on the God. set right now, <laughs> has literally tweeted... Janet, you tweeted this? It says, I know we don't know each other very well, but it suddenly seems important for us to get married. Uh-oh. Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait, Janet, what are you doing? I, she's she's getting down in front of the screen. I don't have. I mean, this is awkward. If I, could, I mean, if I could offer you a, a ring from Saturn, I, I told would. her not to do this. But she's I just am so overwhelmed right now that uh, I gotta know. Can we do this or? Uh, All right, it was a like, bad idea. It was a bad idea. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm good. It's stupid. I'm it's really stupid. sorry that she did that, man. I asked her not to do it. When I saw the tweet, I was mortified. Don't, I hope your girlfriend doesn't come here to HuffPost Live and, and take us down. <laughs> hey man, uh, I know we got one thing in the control room they want to put up on the screen. Luke, do you have it ready? Let's see it. Dude, all these memes, what is it like ultimately? I, you're doing something so remarkable and we're, we're you know, um, we're having a good time with it, but what is it like, what is it like for you? It must be at least a little bit of a release to be a to be an internet sensation, uh, guide, guide a rovers, a ro- what does it say? Guides guide? a rover through space and into my heart. Well, you know, it must, it must feel good. <laughs> I think man. it sounds better coming from a female voice. Yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. How how does it feel, man? You must feel great. Uh, it's uh, it's really flattering. I think uh, the best part is that my coworkers won't let me live it down. Uh, they've been having a lot of fun at my expense, and so uh, as long as we're all laughing, it's it's good. The other day, they put one of the memes up. Uh, well, actually, they uh, the over the net very seriously. They announced that we're we're getting a new image from Mars. They're going to process it and they'll put it up on the screens. And we have these uh, you know these displays around the room to show all these these pictures as they come down. And it turns out it's a picture of me superimposed on the Brokeback Mountain poster. Brokeback <laughs> <laughs> Mountain. So uh, oh, I love it, man. And- you know, They're keeping me grounded. They won't let me live this down for a while, I think. You know what's so funny to me is that I actually did a piece leading up to the to the rover landing with Adam Steltzner, and I interviewed him about, you know, how excited he is to be basically doing the, the EDL portion of this. And I remember thinking, look at that badass pompadour on this yes. guy. And your yes. hairdo has totally overshadowed Adam's hairdo. Are you I don't guys, know I don't know how that happens. Is there anybody else in that control room who's part of like the cool hair club? I mean, I think the Steve Collins, who's uh, you know kind of the hippie, crazy hair guy. I love that guy's uh, hair. Oh, he's the man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. We know that. I he'll thought get, it was. I thought Willie Nelson day. was there. <laughs> yeah. He'll get his day, his time in the sun. He looks good. Well, Bob, yeah. man, like I said, we're so proud of you and proud of everything that's going on over at JPL. It's uh, it's an amazing thing for our country, and I know that everybody at HuffPost Live uh, and the Huffington Post community is uh, is excited for you as well. So, congratulations to you. Thank you for joining us. And when stuff develops, I hope you'll come back and sort of give us uh, give us the scoop about what's going on on the Red Planet, man. Totally, it'll be my pleasure.
I'll, I'll keep it together next time. Yeah, get it together, Janet. I don't know what that was. That was, that was, that was nothing. She sort of, lo- she, she, yeah. you know, you know yeah. just take a deep breath. I was, I was just having fun. <laughs> all right, Bob Ag, all the best to you, man. Everybody stick around. There's a lot more to come on HuffPost Live. Don't go anywhere.